catcher and a third baseman for this Panama team. Actually, they did, did flip-flop at the onset. Panama, the visitors, and Select is the home team. Two and two. Full count, runner on second. Gonzalez with a stolen base, and Piera with a chance to give Panama their first lead of the ball game. Payoff pitch. Got him. A called strike three. Vieira is down on strikes. The second strikeout of the ball game for Adrian Figueroa. And Panama strands a runner. We head to the bottom of the first here at ESPN My World of Sports. Team select with their first opportunity to hit when we come back. This is mine. Nothing's getting by me today. You can be filthy, you can be sick, you can be nasty. It doesn't matter. Give me your best, and I'll make it your worst. I own this. I'm MMA champ, Chuck Liddell. I hit stuff. Hard. Real hard. So I know tough. The draw last is tough. It can take the cold. And the heat. Trust me, this battery can beat a pure battery. Dura last. Proven tough. Get in the zone. Auto zone. All right, here we go with the bottom of the first team select at the plate. Isaiah Hood is the first baseman and leadoff hitter for this team select squad. Six inning ball game here.
Oh, look at that. Little web gem caught down the line. Barehanded. Doesn't sting when you bring home a souvenir, though, does it? 0 and 2. Hugo Villavos, the pitcher today, got it, ripped down the line, fair ball, Hood gets aboard. It's going to be a ground rule double as it goes into the corner. Now, Ben, it is the right hand. Number two, two, and. Timmy Manning now. Team select with a runner in scoring position. Down on strikes. Manning's retired. Then it is a shortstop, number 15, Mason Gates. with a stolen base. This is Mason. Ground ball. They thought about going home. They'll get the easy out. And Isaiah Hood comes in to score the first run of the ball game for Team Select. Now then, he's going to get the number one, Robert Moya. Robert Moya now, the left fielder.
grounded to third. Inning over. But Hood starts off the contest, gets aboard with a base hit. And select leads it one to nothing. Turn the pack as on. we check in with the other member of our team this morning until Trevor Shaw joins us, Krista Bedard. KB, a little warm day down there, isn't it? It is unbelievably warm. I am completely sweating through these clothing, but I wouldn't trade it for anything other than to watch great baseball here at the DeMarini Elite World Series. Now, Bernie, Team Select and Team Panama know each other extremely well. They've played each other 12 times this season, but these two teams couldn't be more different. Team Select, it's full of local kids. He doesn't fly anyone in. This is the same team that has played together since the beginning, and they'll play with each other through the end of this season. Now, Team Panama, as you alluded to earlier, gives the opportunity for Panamanian kids to come to the Americas to play the best level of baseball. Their team is a mix. It's a constant process of bringing kids in, taking kids out. They'll only play who they think is ready to play. Both of these teams want it extremely bad, so it is going to be a battle. Thank you, KB. We appreciate you spending some time with us on our broadcast. Should be a great one between Panama and Team Select. A hit a piece for both these teams so far. Okay, okay. I got nervous. I like, oh. <laughs> great pitching the storyline, and this is a 12U championship game, but these folks down there certainly don't look like 12 year olds. Top of the second inning. Abner Benitez now is the hitter. Five foot four, sixth grader out of Miami, Florida. He's a Yankee fan that likes Miguel Cabrera. Who doesn't like the Yankees? Hits sharply to second. A little double pump for the second baseman. Kerry Torres, and he's over to first. Round number one in the inning. That'll bring up David Castillo. Benny is the DH, number 42, David Castillo. of friends and family down in Panama making their way where they can watch this game together. We're glad you're watching with us. This one hit to right field. And it's caught by Timmy Manning for out number two. Two outs in the inning. Hugo Villalobos.
Three and one. And he walked. It's the second base run of the ball game for Panama. So and one. Things are really starting to heat up. Two. It's sharply and knocked down by the shortstop. How about the yard showcased by Mason Nates? Great composure as he fires across the diamond. To record the final out. One nothing our score as we head to the bottom of the second. All right, Bernie got there. Matt Trebuchon joining us. Got another tight one to start. <laughs> Unbelievable pitching in this one, and so much talent. It's foul back. Team select leading by a run. And Jason Toller is at the plate. One and two. Got him swinging. Villabos gets the strikeout. And there's one out here in the second inning. A fantastic pitch. Let's take another look. Now this is the pitch number 24. Adrian Figueroa now. <laughs> 
talking about pitching. Um, Team Panama, one of those teams that's uh, seven and zero on the week, straight through the winners bracket, haven't had one hiccup all weekend. As compared to Select, who had to win that extra game out of the losers bracket yesterday, so they've been taxed with one more game of pitching. And I'll be willing to bet that this has allowed Panama to set up the rotation where this is the number one. Yeah. That's exactly where you want to be in this championship game. How about the play there made by the second baseman for Panama? That's Carlos Castillo. He's able to make the play, just couldn't get that throw on the money. It was going to be a tough play for the first baseman, Abner Benitez. Well, as we take another look at it, you can see just no, as no. how far he travels, he gets a little nasty hop, just a tad no, off balance when he makes the throw. First baseman stretched as far as he could possibly go. Almost completed the perfect infield play. You know, as you watch these catchers, both teams, the catchers bouncing inside and out, both sides of the zone, and the pitchers hitting those spots. Oh, and two. And a balk is called. And so the runner moves up into scoring position at second. And now Team Select has a chance to add to this one run lead. How about this team from Panama putting together some of the best players uh, in the Central America, Caribbean, an awfully talented roster they bring to the table here, don't they? Well, that explains why they're perfect 7-0 and on the week. Um, of course, I don't know how large the pool is of the players that they pull from, but we know that that whole part of the world is baseball rich in yeah. talent. Unbelievable amounts of talent down that way, and they just love this game. And what an opportunity for them to come here to Orlando, to ESPN, Wild World of Sports for our League World Series. Just off the outside corner. Yeah, they've uh, they've outscored their opponents this week in the seven games, 62 to 17. That means offensive pop and good pitching. So what does that tell you about Adrian Figueroa and the way he's pitched here in this game? Runner going. Sean Shambo, the extra hitter at the plate, just got enough to foul it back. Kill both remains these, one or two. Both these pitchers are uh, are gonna are gonna be bringing their A game. They know they have to have their A game for this championship. Grounded. Second over to first. Second out. Castillo fires it over to first base. For the second out of the inning, you know, Sean Shambo is retired. Now betting is the catcher for the Celtics. It's number 22, Chris Sachet. Talk about the dedication for this Panama team. We're told that uh, sometimes they're walking up to a half an hour down in Panama to find a spot that has internet available to watch these games on YouTube. Let's say live.com. 
Well, UCCC has done a fabulous job of opening this event up for the world to see. They stream all the games, so every one of the Panama's games, uh, the people back home have been able to find an internet connection, uh, whether it's at a restaurant or a friend's house, and watch these games. And now here they are in the champions game with a live broadcast. You know they're huddled around computers or, or big TV, big TVs with HDMI cables and whatever it takes. <laughs> Apple TVs and all that jazz. Roku boxes. Now there, right there is an example of a, a special USSA rule. It's a speed up rule. Yep. Is the uh, Panama, they elected to intentionally walk the batter and versus going through the, the action of throwing the four pitches. They saved that time put that runner on first base automatically. So they're on the corners. And Brandon Ortiz is the batter. Dancing around on the base pass. Rudder going. And the throw goes to third as opposed to second. But no surprise there. Two in scoring position. Team select already up by a run. This one lifted, but foul into the stands. Ground ball foul. Into center base hit. They're waving around to the throw on the line and they got him. What a bullet fired by the center fielder Enrique Bradfield. Team select able to score a run. But a brilliant defensive play by the Panama center fielder saves. What would have been the third run of the ball game. We head to the third. Team select up by two. For team select in the bag of second. One run, one hit, one left on base. We'll go to top of the third inning. Ace team says two. Since day one, combat has been at the forefront of composite bats. 
Combat bats deliver on average a 15% larger sweet spot than the closest competitor. In today's game, where margins for error are small, combat's on average 15% larger sweet spot means our bats reach maximum performance over a wider span. It's the difference between a home run or the warning track, a base hit through the middle or hitting into a double play. It's the difference between winning and losing. This is mine. Nothing's getting by me today. You can be filthy, you can be sick, you can be nasty. It doesn't matter. Give me your best, and I'll make it your worst. I own this. All right, we're back on YouTubeLSALive.com. Bernie Gunther, Matt Trebuchon, Krista Bedard, glad you're with us. 12U Elite World Series. Talked about that potent offense it's been for Panama here in the tournament, but it hasn't been the case in this contest. Adrian Figueroa has held them to just one hit through the first two innings at the plate. And Tommy Guerra, the right fielder at the plate here to lead off the third. And Guerra is from Panama, Yankee fan, and also a big fan of Mike Trout. Well, you can't blame a kid for being a big fan of Mike Trout. Yeah. You know, what a classic young ball player. Swing and a miss. Said he's got a great arm. He's been playing baseball since he's been eight years old. And he moved from Panama here five years ago. And he's really loved playing here in America. He's behind one and two. That went up and out of the zone. It's two and two. Full count. If there's one arm here at the Elite World Series that could possibly shut down this powerful Panama offense, it would be Figueroa. Grounded to short. Out number one. Easy play there for Mason Gates. Adrian's only uh, previously pitched three innings in the tournament, so he's well rested. He hasn't thrown through three innings on Wednesday. Uh, well rested. Obviously, uh, Team Select was able to set their rotation up to have their number one gun on the bump in the championship game. And so far, he's showing why he's the number one. And excuse me, that was Espinal that grounded out. This is Tommy Guerra now. First pitch called strike. One and one. You know, Bernie, this game is uh, so much different than uh, what we might see in, uh, in the Little League World Series. Um, playing by Major League rules. You know, you think back to the Little League World Series and pitcher, pitchers all the time, every pitch, going from the windup because runners can't lead off. Uh, there's no reason to hold a runner. Here at the, at the USSA Elite World Series, pitchers have to both work both mechanics. They, right. they have to work from the windup and the stretch. They have to hold runners. So th that can be a lot for a 12-year-old. Uh, but Figueroa, as you can see, he appears to have a grasp of both. He's firing all cylinders so far today. That's his third strikeout. 
number 25 in the You know, you put that ball right on the inside corner, right at the bottom of the letters. Nobody can hit that. If you do make contact, it's going to go straight up foul. It's the perfect pitch location if you're going to come in and inside and high. Enrique Bradfield now takes the first pitch up and inside. A ball. Ooh. You got to look out even here in the 12U championship game just like you would when the Atlanta Braves play spring training here. That ball really rockets off the bat. One and two. Excuse me. Now it's one and two after it's fouled back. You know, it's got to be a, a, an incredible feeling to know these little 12 year old boys. They're standing in the same exact two batters boxes that some of the legends of the game, the modern legends, have played in. You know, the Braves have been here spring training, I believe, since the late 80s or the early 90s. So they've been here a while. There's been some incredible players that have come through here. Yeah. You know, most notably, Chipper Jones. How many spring training at bats did he have in those boxes? But of course, you're a little biased because you are a Braves fan at the end of the day. Well, I don't have a choice but to be biased because, yes, I am a Braves fan. But you're right, even in. Uh, Spring training all throughout Florida. So many great franchises have worked their way through here as you see a walk issue to Enrique Bradfield. And here's the center fielder doing big things. He gets that great defensive throw home and now draws a walk. And Panama has a base runner here with two outs in the third. Well, I don't know if our uh, our, out, our our center camera can catch the a shot of the scoreboard that's here at Champion Stadium. But I remember back in the uh, early 90s, coming to a spring training game, you know, the Tigers are down in, uh, are down in around the Lakeland area. And I came to a Braves and Tigers spring training game and I'm, there's the clock. I watched Cecil Fielder put one over the clock. Unbelievable. And, and, and here's a 12 year old standing in the same batter's box on the same field. Check the runner back. But it's one thing, you know, we get a chance to do the USSA Men's Major World Series and we see those players hit the ball over the scoreboard. Completely different ball. That one has got to be absolutely hammered to hit a baseball that far. With a wooden bat. Yeah. Now, of course, Cecil Fielder, he hit many a moonshots. He was a great power hitter. But still, the, the point of it is, is that these 12 year olds being able to play on this field in this stadium, this is what USSA in the, elite, in the uh, elite World Series offers these athletes. What great memories. When you take a look at this tournament obviously happening right now, but we saw Don Dinanatis and Rick Fortuna, George Brett here for the USSA All-American Games. And those players will be here in the stadium in just a couple days competing for their championship. And that's certainly a really special new concept where obviously, you know, these travel ball teams do a great job of putting together some of the best rosters, not only from their area around the state, around the country, but this is a team that's selected a completely different way to be a member of that regional team to be an All-American. That, that's a pretty special line to put behind you, especially as you continue to progress in your baseball career. You know, I was really, really fortunate to be involved in the uh, in the All American Games that uh, selection process. In fact, uh, me and KB we did the uh, selection shows together, and I remember making comments uh, about uh, this being the highlight of these kids up, you know, in their career to this point. What a big pitch there. Strikeout to end the inning. We head to the bottom of the third. 2-0 our score here at ESPN Wild World of Sports. 
is the world's premier sports organization with over 4 million participants. The top youth baseball stars compete at the Wilson DeMarini Elite World Series and the Louisville Slugger Championship, looking to qualify for the USSA National Youth Championships. In basket, the top teenagers are on the field with USA Select, and the best in the world are on the USSA Florida Pride. Nationwide Conference USSA provides the ultimate challenge in slow pitch softball. At every level, you play the best when you play USSA. All right, Select has scored a run on the first. They tacked down one on the second. But here to start the third inning, it's a strikeout at their second baseman, Kearney Torres. Now ready. And there's one out. Panama made a pitching change in between innings, went to uh, Jonathan Caballero, another lefty. A little bit uh, smaller package than the uh, previous pitcher, but sometimes it's not all about size, it's more about command and control. Ground ball. Base hit to right. Now winning is number two. Carlos Castillo. One and one. One and one. talking about the All-American games and uh, you know the concept and what it brings for these athletes to the table and you had mentioned you know representing the region and a lot of the, a lot of the people following the broadcast here may not realize exactly how that was done but the country was divided into eight regions yeah far west northwest midwest central Great Lakes northeast uh, southeast and Atlantic and the AAG scout team held uh, 20, 22, 24 different uh, showcase tryouts all around the country in these different regions. 
uh, for ages 9 through 14, and then they compiled all those numbers, created created profiles for the players, and, uh, and then selected the top 15 in each age in each region. So now you've got those, each, each of the eight regions has got their All-American region team here at the Wide World of Sports. And actually the nines, 11s, and 13s, they've started playing this morning in their preliminary pool play. And the 10, 12s, and 14s will kick it off tomorrow. And they're just playing a round robin style tournament with single elimination on the end. Three and two. And a lot of the kids that you see in these championship games today, they're going to be leaving their team after this game and joining their all joining Pretty their impressive, all right? team. Yeah. And it's really the perfect setup to play in the Elite World Series. You get to represent your, you know, the team you've been playing for all year long. But then talk about the opportunity to play with a completely different group. Yeah, well, you know, game is a, uh, baseball's a game of repetition, you know. Um, and, and coaching, if you got the basic fundamentals, and of course, obviously these kids are displaying to us, they've got the basic fundamentals, you know. Yeah. So it's, 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 I think it's easy for them, or easier for them to uh, join like an on almost like an all-star program like that, like the All-American games are, and step right in, jump right in, and be ready to play. You know, as opposed to like football, yeah. you just can't do that in football because of the plays and all the, 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 the line coordination and formations and stuff like that. But this is an opportunity for these kids to, who have represented their local team or, or, or their travel team, and they've fulfilled that commitment, and now they're gonna step up and even to a higher level because basically they're going to join 14 other of the absolute best kids in their age group in their region of the country to battle the rest of the country. Okay. No, it's unbelievable the the amount of talent that's there. And and a matter of fact, uh, the utriplesalive.com is streaming the 9 and 9, 11, and 13 year old games as we speak. Those games are also taking place right here at the Wide World of Sports. You know, I think USSA State does, does an absolute fabulous job of giving the young athletes an opportunity to play in Central Florida. You know, but but most importantly, in the wide world of sports, right here at Disney World, Mickey Mouse is right across the street, and that's just uh, an opportunity that USSA is afforded to these athletes. One and two. Select trying to score for the third consecutive inning. Down talk on about, strikes. Talk about hitting your spot. Catcher <laughs> moved out two, two, two little wiggles to the outside corner, and he painted it right there. Painted the black. A beautiful pitch to end the inning. We got a good one here from ESPN Wild World of Sports. Halfway through the contest, team select leading two to nothing. Since day one, Combat has been at the forefront of composite bats. Combat bats deliver on average a 15% larger sweet spot than the closest competitor. In today's game, where margins for error are small, Combat's on average 15% larger sweet spot means our bats reach maximum performance over a wider span. It's the difference between a home run or the warning track. 
a base hit through the middle, or hitting into a double play. It's the difference between winning and losing. Top of the fourth inning here from ESPN Wild World of Sports. Let's check in with the third member of the team, Kristen Bedard. You guys are trailing in a very, very close game. You've had the base runners. How do you bring them home? Well, uh, this is pretty much the story of Team Panama in the last couple of games. We've been coming from behind. It's, it's all about uh, one battle at a time. Once that we get to get on base, uh, I think we, we, I mean, we will make things happen. You know, we got speed, uh, we got power, and we got a tremendous bench that uh, is ready to hit in situations of uh, base runners or position. All right, now switching to your defense side, you issued the intentional walk to Chris Thatcher. What was behind that decision? Okay, we know Chris. Well, no, he's a uh, you know the size only. You, when you see the size, you know that it's a power hitter. And uh, at that moment, uh, we, we that's what we tell. We tell that uh, it wasn't uh, our best interest to put it on Bates. You know, try to get the next batter, which is you know somebody that we also know we were pretty much. But uh, with Chris, you know, it's a dangerous batter. You know, I think is there anybody in that team has the power to hit a home run? Is that's one of the guys. So you know, we try to play safe with him. All right, coach. Thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you, KB. Fourth inning, Panama with just one hit so far in the ball game, trailing two to nothing, despite the fact, and that's how sometimes cruel this tournament can be. Panama has been a team that has been perfect all the way until this championship game, but they've really run into some great pitching, and that obviously tends to be the difference maker. Well, I think Panama has at the plate scoring 62 runs this week. You know, they've shown their offensive power, but they hadn't run into Adrian Figueroa yet. And he may be, he may be the, the key to a select victory. Great play, crowd number one. You know, I noticed in the last inning uh, Adrian had a batter that he uh, he went 0-3 or 3-0 uh, to, and uh, I didn't see any emotion. I didn't see him getting upset. I didn't see any frustration. You know, he's 12 years old, but he's up there like a professional. Figueroa reminds me of the uh, the young lefty for the Atlanta Braves, Alex Wood. He's got that little hiccup in his in his head in his delivery. Base hit to center. Second hit of the ball game, and Nicholas Vieira is on board. Abner Benitez now. Now back. You know, sometimes we we overlook the little things, whether it's the little things in life or even the little things in a in a baseball tournament. Yeah. But I just happened to realize that the the wide world of sports uh, PA announcer is announcing the Panama batters when they come up. He first announces them in Spanish and then turns around and announces them in English. That's just a little touch. Yeah, the little right things, there. right? It's the little things that make a difference because obviously the Panama. 
as, as, as an English speaking nation, we take that for granted. But there's Panama fans here that may not speak English. It's those little things that make this event so incredible. Makes it the most sought after travel ball World Series that there is. Man, that was a nice little flip there to second, but the throwback not in time. There's two outs in the inning now. And we're late in this ball game, and Panama's in some ways running out of outs. There's seven outs remaining for them here in this championship. The player is number 42, David Castillo. Well, if Figueroa stays in his game, can keep himself from getting flustered, keeps his emotions in check, can stay smooth throughout this whole contest, he may be the one, the one that does in the, pan, the hot, hot, hot and powerful Panama offense. and his battery mate getting together, making sure they're on the same page. I have a feeling he got crossed up on that pitch. over. Panama gets another hit. They strand a base runner, but they trail by two as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Here at ESPN's Y World of Sports, great pitching the storyline for Team Select and their coach is standing by down on the field with Crystal Bedard. I'm here with John Calabrese, head coach of Team Select. Now, John, there was a bang-bang play at home in the second inning that could have been the difference having three runs on the board versus two what was the decision behind sending the runner we're aggressive we play aggressive all year got over 300 stolen bases that's how we play make the other team make the mistakes we force them into things that they're not accustomed to doing kid made a great play out there that's all we can say and then switching it to the defense you've been able to shut down this team panama team so far what does that say about your pitcher figueroa and the defense behind him I believe we made five errors in ten games this this tournament. I think that's outstanding. That's how we win. We play defense. Play defense, and, and Figgy's a big league pitcher. One of the top in the country that doesn't get recognized. He should be recognized. Adrian Figueroa. All right, Coach. Well, thank you so much. Thank Back you. to you guys. Well, his pitcher said doesn't get enough national recognition, but how about the way that he shut down this potent Panama offense? You talked about their run production coming into this championship it's got to turn a couple of heads yeah they got uh, they're deep with power um, I, I believe as a team uh, nine or ten home runs this week um, I watched I had the luxury of watching them play a couple innings yesterday and um, they were in the lower part of the order you know where they don't have quite as much power they're putt runners over they're taking advantage advantage of every pitch in the dirt you know they're they Panama is really aggressive on the bases and you match that with the power and that's where you get all these runs
Two and two. Did he go? He did. One out. The pitching battle wages on. There's just five combined hits in the ball game, Matt. But the uh, the biggest difference, obviously, is the two runs that Team Select's been able to string together. It's all about timely hits. When you get that runner on base, if you can find a way or manufacture a way to get him to second, you got to have the guy in behind him, the guy, uh, the next guy up, who can make that clutch hit and uh, find a hole, hit it where they're not. You know, Caballero came in uh, and uh, for Panama took the hill and uh, he's been just as smooth as uh, Figueroa has on the other side. I think it's a left-handed thing. Yeah. You know, typically th people think of lefties being a little bit more wild, but both of these guys are dead on. Two and two. Ground ball, base hit. That play right there is a perfect example of how anytime the ball's in play in baseball, every player on the field has got a, a has got a job. You know, at second baseman, he dove for that. You okay. saw it ricochet out of his out of his glove, just a tad bit outside his range. And, and in the background, you could see the shortstop was right there to get it, being where he's supposed to be. Everybody's always got a job when the ball's in play. Well, here's the man, Adrian Figueroa, as you take another look. And there's our shortstop, right where he's supposed to be. And look at the center fielder. He's moving in the direction of the ball, too. One and one. One ball, two strikes. setting up just a tad bit outside, um, trying to work. Maybe it, it may all be part of a strategy to set, set the hitter up, work him away, work him away, work him away, then bust him inside. We'll see what we get here. Panama's pitching Figueroa with a heavy dose of outside. They flip it to third and they got him. And that's just a base running error there. And unfortunately, the runner, he knew it. The minute he slid into third base, he knew that he made the mistake. 
Um, now, you know, when, that, when you're a runner on second, that ground ball's hit in front of you. You got to wait and see if it gets through. If it's hit behind you, uh, it's a it's a free pass to third. Because obviously in that situation, there still likely would have been a second out as the ball got thrown over to first, but he still would have had the runner in scoring position. Right. Well, you got that runner. You got the runner uh, still only two bags away, or as in Major League Baseball, they'd say 180 feet. Here we're going to say 140. Yeah. Because of the 70 foot bases. Swing and a miss. Trying to get the runner back to second, and they're not going to get him. What a bullet down to second by Nicholas Vera, the catcher. Who makes the play to retire the side, but a shaken up player down there at second. Maybe we could try to take one more look to see what happened. Here's another look. Yeah, they just got tangled up, and I, I believe the uh, shortstop's head uh, collided with the batting helmet of the runner. Inning over. We head to the fifth. Team Select still leading two to nothing. Baseball fans, my name is Dylan Bundy, Major League Pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles. Growing up, I played Triple SA Baseball, and that was the start of my youth career. Now I am a proud member of the All-American team. Playing in the All-American Showcase will allow you to be the next All-American. Are you the next All-American? Come showcase your skills in front of our professional scouting staff who will create for you a personalized player profile. Go to USAAllamerican.com today to find out how our evaluation process can help prepare you to play at the next level. This is mine. Nothing's getting by me today. You can be filthy, you can be sick, you can be nasty. It doesn't matter. Give me your best, and I'll make it your worst. I own this. Well, guys, I had an interesting conversation with Team Select head coach John Calabrese. We've been talking about this relationship between Figueroa and his catcher and what a phenomenal game he's throwing. Calabrese let me know that for a 12 and under team, his catcher, Chris Satcher, calls the entire game. I don't know what's more impressive than that, that these two are running this Team Select show. Wow. That is a 12-year-old calling the game. That's unbelievable. Uh, Every team you see, the, the coach is always calling the pitches, but team select, it's all on that young man. Bill Lobos here to lead off. Top of the fifth, Panama. One ball, one strike. Hugo takes a fastball inside, right up on the letters. Fly ball left center, and out. Castillo steps into the box. He was the second baseman who had the diving play just out of his reach last inning. He takes a ball high. Flashes a little bunt there, more of a distraction than actually bunting. 
pulls it back and takes a called strike. Evens up the count one and one. Figueroa strikes the black. Down on the way. One ball, two strikes. Excuse me, foul ball swing. Count remains one and two. Ground ball gobbled up by the third baseman. Score that one five to three, put it in the book. And Select has two outs here in the top of the fifth. ESPN's Wide World of Sports. Now ready. In sunny, beautiful, and warm Central Florida. Now ready is the pitcher, number one, John Kier Aguilar. Got a pinch hitter here for Espinal. Uh, Yangville Aguilar, number one, Ang Yangville Aguilar steps in. This will be his first at bat of the game. Figueroa is poised in the pitch. Breaking ball across for the strike. Figueroa misses a hair up size, even the count, one and one. Two balls, one strike, Figueroa back up on the bump. Breaking ball high and away. Runs the count to three and one. Hitters count. Panama trying to get something started here in the top of the fifth. Running out of time. Yeah, an incredible ball game it's been so far as far as the pitching is concerned. Figueroa is still going. And he's held the top offense in this Elite World Series with just two hits. Amazing. I mean, this is a team in seven. Of course, math is not my forte, but this yep. is a team in seven games who scored 62 runs, and they got a zero right now. Uh, that speaks volumes to the abilities of Figueroa. And thanks to KB's work, his catcher too, his battery yeah. mate, calling this game for him. You know, that's Major League Baseball right there. You know, all the catchers in Major League Baseball have volumes of notebooks. Well, they probably have one computer disc these days or thumb drives, but they used to have volumes of notebooks of notes on every hitter's, what every hitter's tendencies was, what the, what the batter liked, what he didn't like. Here's a 12-year-old kid, and, and, and he's just pulling from memory of what the kid did uh, earlier in the game at an earlier at bat, and he's 12 years old doing this. Unbelievable. And what a what an impressive performance that has to be for coaches that understand that fact, probably not today, but when he's 14, 15, 16 years old getting recruited to know that he's been calling games at this level since he was 12 years old, and possibly, obviously, even younger. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he it's obvious, and actually I can tell by his build, and I can tell, by the way, he just popped up out of the crouch right there, fired that ball down the first behind the runner, trying to get him creeping off. I mean, this kid is well-schooled in the game. He knows his trade. He knows what he's doing back there. And 
you'll notice Figueroa never shakes him off, ever. So he, he has total trust. Popped up, caught. He has total trust in, uh, in his catcher, Chris Satcher, that what, whatever you put down, I'm gonna throw it because I trust what you're doing. Well, they're three outs away from being named Elite World Series champions. Team select up two to nothing as we head to the bottom of the fifth. USSA is the world's premier sports organization with over 4 million participants. The top youth baseball stars compete at the Wilson DeMarini Elite World Series and the Louisville Slugger Championship, looking to qualify for the USSA National Youth Championships. In basketball, the top teenagers are on the field with USA Select, and the best in the world are on the USSA Florida Pride. Nationwide Conference USSA provides the ultimate challenge in slow pitch softball. At every level, you play the best when you play USSA. I'm MMA champ, Chuck Liddell. I hit stuff. Hard. Real hard. So I know tough. The draw last is tough. They can take the cool. And the heat. Trust me, this battery can beat a pure battery. Duralast, proven tough. Get in the zone. Auto zone. Okay, here we are, back, bottom of the fifth inning. Team select up two to nothing. ESPN Wide Worlds of Sports at Disney World. In the box, the EH extra hitter, Sean Chambo. And that pitch fouled off, counts 0-2. Panama brings a new pitcher to the mound here to start the uh, bottom of the fifth inning, number 77, Alejandro Galarillo. Wearing the old traditional, old style high socks on the mound. Wind up in the pitch. Ball down and away. Runs a count to one ball, two strikes. Gallardo misses outside. Even the count up 2 2. Ground ball to second baseman, right side. Wild throw. First baseman holds the bag. Keeps his foot down long enough to get the out. One down here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Team Select clings to their two-run lead. They played it one in the first, played it one in the second, and the scoreboard's been all zero since then. And here's the catcher, number 22, Chris Satcher. Takes a fastball on the outside corner. 
Owen won. Satcher, foul, Satcher fouls one away. Draws the count to 0-2. This little 12-year-old, it's, it's amazing that Chris Satcher is calling the game defensively behind the plate. He calls all the pitches himself. You just don't see that in, at 12-year-old baseball. Sasser chases a pitch out of the strike zone. And Gallardo draws the K for two outs. That's going to bring to the plate Brandon Ortiz, the center fielder for Team Select. Gallardo on the mound, got the high socks. The wind up pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Lays down a bunt, goes foul down the first baseline. You'll notice when uh, the Panama catcher, Nicholas Vera, gets down in the crouch behind the plate, he looks to the dugout to get that call on what, what, what to throw down, what pitch is going to be thrown. You don't see that on Team Select. Satcher calls it himself. And a ball outside runs a count to one ball and two strikes. <laughs> and he gets the out. <laughs> And let's check in with the third member of our team, Krista Bedard. Guys, things are about to get interesting. Figueroa has run out of innings, according to USSA rules, which means Team Select is going to be forced to make a pitching change. Now, during that last half inning, the entire dugout was chiming in on who they wanted to see on the plate based on the matchups of Team Panama. The baseball IQ in that dugout is extremely high for this 12 and under team. The coaching staff wouldn't reveal who was coming in. He said it depended on what happened in the bottom of the fifth, but we're about to see who's gonna come in and close out this game for Team Select. Well, they're three outs away from being named the USSA Elite World Series champions. An impressive performance for Figaro, but his day is done. And so we'll see if Team Select can finish off the game. A new pitcher number five. Kristen, maybe you could find out the name because actually they didn't number their substitutes for us on this roster. It's Gavin Schomer on the bump for Team Select, but Coach John is having other guys warm up just to be prepared for any situation that could happen. Oh, thank you. There it is. So Gavin Schomer is the new pitcher. He's got some tall orders, Matt, coming in the way that Figueroa threw today to try to close this game off. Well. You know, team select, let's let's break this down, Bernie. The catcher calls the game all by himself. They start their game with their number one on the mound. Why would they not go to the closer in the sixth? Yeah, right? you got I to, mean, right? You got to. Right? I mean this is a this is a miniature minor league club right here. Schomer warms up. I believe KB said every single game, just in case. You know, we've seen a heavy dose of left-handed pitching in this game. And we all know that 
There's obviously a lot more right-handed arms in baseball than there are left-handed arms. That's why the lefties draw the money in the big leagues. Um, but at 12 years old, here we go. A heavy dose of lefties for 12s. Just makes it more And I guess you're smiling in some ways if you're Panama because you're finally seeing somebody else there on the mound. If I'm the Panama coach, I'm a happy man right now because we never did, if I'm Panama, we never did figure out how to deal with Figueroa. Maybe we got a chance here with Schaumer. I don't know, I haven't seen Schaumer's stuff, but it can't be any, any more difficult than Figueroa was because he just had our number. <laughs> Team Panama is down to their final three outs. Safe. Boy, what a beautiful bunt. Laid it down in the perfect spot on the infield, and it died. It hit the ground once, it bounced, and it died. It's going to be a short day for Gavin Schaumer. He may have been brought in just to face that one left-handed batter to get the lefty-lefty matchup. <laughs> this is a pro ball club. It's it? team select. I mean, they have 12-year-old catchers calling the game. I well, guess how does that help you recruit catchers in the future too when you know the catcher has the opportunity to do that? Oh yeah, definitely. And they're going to Sean Chambo. The righty. He was the EH, the extra hitter. Now he'll come in into the lineup. And one of the other players that was in the lineup, whoever Gavin Schaumer replaced, will now move to the EH role. That's a way USSA lets teams have a tenth player participate in the game. Right. It's, it's not a DH. He's not batting for somebody. Uh, he's batting along with the other nine to give them a ten man lineup. as we watch Shambo getting loose. Getting ready, he's got a tall order here. He's gotta face the two, three, four batters in the Panama lineup, and that's almost a mini murderer's row. It is, isn't it? He's got his hands full. It'll be very interesting to see what he brings us. Batting for Team Panama is number 22, David Arroyo. You know, Bernie, you mentioned last inning how important it would have been for Select to get an extra run along the way. You know, how much, how much more does that base running error with that runner getting thrown out at third base possibly could have cost them a third run? How much, how much larger does that loom now when you got Panama's got a runner on first, nobody out with the meat of the order up? Field. He st stole second on that pitch right there. Stole easily. So now they got the runner in scoring position. Nobody out. Now you don't have to burn it out, bunting the runner over. Changes the whole comp complexity of the offense here. Deep fly ball up to the wall. And it's gone! Oh my goodness! Just like that, we're tied. They waited until the final inning to finally strike and did so in a huge way. Well, 
that'll spark the lively in any team right there. Now Here's another look at it. Fastball, belt high, left it over to the middle of the plate. That's about a 275, 280 foot shot right there with, a, with, with the runner on second base. Knots us up at two apiece. Just ran out of innings with your ace. What can you do? Well, you hope you got your number two. You know, that's the, that's the difficulty of Another deep fly back ball. Deep, and it's going again. Panama goes back to back with the Jacks. And just like that, they're up three to two here in this championship game. <laughs> I don't believe it. You know, right there before Gonzalez hit that pitch. I was about to say that, uh, you know, that one of the difficulties in playing in a tournament like the Elite World Series is with so many teams and with, with the extreme format that they, uh, you just never know what kind of pitching you're gonna have left there at the end. You don't know what you're gonna have. But the thing is, as you play through the tournament, you gotta win that day, because if you don't win that day, there is no game tomorrow. Yeah. So you may have to burn number one, number two, number three, number four, earlier in the week to get to this day. And then sometimes you gotta go bullpen by committee, which is what I'm afraid Team Select's at right now. You know, they had Figueroa, he had five innings left, and he pitched a gem for five innings. And unfortunately, at this point, that's all for naught. Yeah. A wasted performance. Um, and now it's up to a bullpen that we're not really sure is, is what it has left, how much t uh, fuel's in that tank. But Panama's already taken a three to two, a three to two lead here, and uh, and there's still nobody out. Nobody out. Panama catcher, number 44, Vera, Nicholas Vera, he steps in. Takes the first pitch in the dirt, ball one. What a moment. What a contest this game has been. Nicholas Vera, the catcher. Can they go back to back to back? Wow. You remember, Bernie, I made the comment about the power in this offense. It's explosive, and as you know, as they've proven here, they can score runs in a hurry. And now Panama has their bullpen up and going as they get their closer set, because they're three outs away from the Elite World Series. And a walk. Hasn't been easy for Sean Shambo in a relief. Now winning it is number four, Abner Benitez. Benitez now. Runner going. The throw is late. There's a stolen base. You know, Bernie, we were talking in the uh, ten, the uh, ten and under championship game that that aired prior to the twelves, and that right there, that base is stolen on the pitcher. There's nothing that the catcher can do on that when the runner gets that type of jump. The pitcher's got to modify his mechanics and go to a slide step to keep that runner even close to first. Runner going again, no throw. Well, they're putting it together at the right moment, aren't they? 
Well, I guess, you know, I guess we should have expected it. You don't play seven games and score 62 runs and all of a sudden not score any. Yeah. Although if Figueroa had the innings and would have stayed in the game, that might be what we would have seen. He really had the Panama number today. This Panama team may be your favorite right now at the National Youth Championships. From everything I've seen so far, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, they just, they're relentless. They're just a relentless ball club. They never die, they never give up. Um, and they can score runs in bunches and in a hurry. They got a lot of pop back to back to back. It's gonna be really exciting. 0-2, oh, swing and a miss. And finally, there's an out recorded here in the inning. told uh, that they needed to go through the heart of the lineup. And it hasn't been easy. This is David Castillo now. Swinging to make it five to two. Panama looking for maybe the third home run of the inning, potentially. <laughs> oh and two. Well, there was no in, no doubt about Castillo's intentions on that swing. One and two. You know, I've noticed these pen, the middle of the order, the meat of the order here for Panama. These boys don't get cheated on their swings. They don't indeed. Two and two. You know, Ted Williams used to say, swing absolutely as hard as you can just in case the bat him, accidentally yeah. touches the ball. He made a living out of it. Out into the stands. <laughs> Bouncer. Just short, they go and home. They called, I believe our third base umpire called a balk on the play. Let's see if he did. The wheels are coming off the bus here in the sixth for team select now down four to two. It's a tight play at home. Now the Major League Balk rule plays U Triple S A playing by Major League rules basically. Um, third baseman called a balk or third base umpire called a balk there, but the pitch was thrown, and in Major League Baseball a balk is a delay dead ball, not an automatic dead ball, but it's a delay dead ball. So in that case, being that the pitch was thrown, and the off the offense got the benefit of the play, then the play will stand and the balk is nullified. Jarmer just didn't come set. Uh, sped his wind up, up or his motion up just a little bit much. And you know, pitch and rolls, once, once the pitcher's hands come together, he's got to come set and, and pause somewhere in the motion before he delivers to the plate. He didn't do that on that pitch. And thus they called the balk. Third base umpire all over that. So 
a never ending sixth inning. An inning that has had some big at bats. Well, now if your team select, you got to begin to think, what do I have to do to get out of this? Because I'm already down two runs. You know, it took me, I managed to play one in the first and one in the second, but I haven't done a whole lot offensively since then. Now, another run or two here by Panama can, can practically sew it up. Yeah. Two and out. Yeah, I guess they're thinking if only they had one more inning left with their ace, Adrian Figueroa, they might already be hoist hoisting the trophy. I believe they'd hosted it with a one, two, three inning. Yeah. He, he was that dominant today. Frank uh, Eslett coming on to run at first. Backhand, they throw to second and get one, and back to first, 6-4-3 inning, inning, double play. But for the first time today, Team Select Trails, they're down to their final three outs. Sixth inning when we come back to Orlando. Hello, baseball fans. My name is Dylan Bundy, Major League Pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles. Growing up, I played Triple SA Baseball, and that was the start of my youth career. Now I am a proud member of the All-American team. Playing in the All-American Showcase will allow you to be the next All-American. Are you the next All-American? Come showcase your skills in front of our professional scouting staff who will create for you a personalized player profile. Go to USSAAllAmerican.com today to find out how our evaluation process can help prepare you to play at the next level. Since day one, combat has been at the forefront of composite bats. Combat bats deliver on average a 15% larger sweet spot than the closest competitor. In today's game, where margins for error are small, combat's on average 15% larger sweet spot means our bats reach maximum performance over a wider span. It's the difference between a home run or the warning track, a base hit through the middle or hitting into a double play. It's the difference between winning and losing. strike and a right one out now 
Well, now things get interesting here as team selects back to the top of the order with Isaiah Hood. Interesting that uh, although Panama had a lot of activity in the bullpen, they came back to the mound with Gallardo here for the bottom of the sixth. Yeah. A lot of confidence in the young man. Isaiah Hood's job right here as the leadoff man. He is the leadoff man, but also at this point in the game in the bottom of the sixth with all with everything on the line, his job here is invent a way to get on base. No matter what it takes, do whatever has to be done, but Isaiah Hood has to become a base runner here in this game. They gotta get this first runner on before they can even begin to worry about getting the, the tying run on. Grounded to first. They got the bag in time for the second out. How about that hustle there? That was a total foot race, a sprint to the bag. First baseman got him by about a half a step. Excellent play. He was playing a little bit deep. We see the replay here. He was playing a little bit deep, playing where a major league first baseman would play. But of course, the base is 20 feet in from that and just beat him by just a half a step. Brings Timmy Manning to the plate. The last hope for Team Select here in the bottom of the sixth. They got it, and Panama comes back to win it, four to two. Unbelievable comeback. They waited until the sixth, and the bats finally exploded. And Panama is the 2014 Major League World Series champions. And the winning coach. That's He's down you. there standing by with our own Christopher Bedard. <laughs> well, guys, I'm here with winning head coach Tommy Guerra of Team Panama. Now, you guys produced the winning run late in this game. How does it feel to come from behind and grab that W? Uh, it's a tremendous emotion. You know, it's like, uh, you know, every kid has a fantasy to end a game like this. Every kid dream with how to get a home run in the last opportunity to bat. That's what we did. That's what they did. I'm so proud. I'm, I'm very excited. You know, as I say, the kind of games that are maybe the, we meet as the coaches when we were kids, now they haven't. I leave their dreams with them. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a very excited uh, uh, game. Like I say, you know, I don't know how to describe the emotions that we got. Parents, people who came, those kids, they travel far. They come from Panama. They do a tremendous track by low income kids. First time that they play in it at this level. No, I can ask for more than that. You know. And you talk about being in that situation, being able to grab those late inning home runs. You put two back to back. How contagious does offense become once someone breaks through? Yeah, but that's, that's something that we've been doing all around uh, through the tournament, through the uh, World Series. We've been hitting back to back. Every time they, uh, we get on, on the game, it's very contagious. You know, it's like a fever. They, they get in, they get in the game. The emotion, it's, you know, they, 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 they show the, the, uh, to the coaches, to ourselves, to, to the parents, that once they get in the game, they really are on the game, you know, all over, you know, and that's what they did today. Well, before this game, you and I chatted about this is a graduation, that these players have been working very hard for this. <laughs> I may have lost our head coach, but this team is extremely happy as World Series champions. He might be coming back. I'm not sure. I'm he not looks a little wet. 
Did you get wet? That's the question. I did, but I'm gonna take it because it is really warm down here. <laughs> no, it's okay. Enjoy the celebration. Too cool. Now, th like you said, this has been a graduation. This team has been working so hard for this moment. How special is it to stand here as the 12U De Marini Elite World Series champions? Well, this is, uh, like I say, you know, I feel like uh, those professors, when they give you the, you know, the graduation uh, diploma, for, for us, we've been practicing so hard, you know, too many days. We, we practice four or five days a week without rain, with the rain, you know, carpet, anything that we can get, get a hold to practice. And like I say, it was, it was a team effort. There were other kids who practiced in Panama, other kids in Miami. Finally, we get together, I mean, uh, 10 days before we come to the tournament. It was a tremendous sacrifice. When I see this, this is what I always say, that uh, when you get yourself, you know, chasing a dream of fantasy, like I say one more time, this is a fantasy. The difference between us and all the teams, is that we got kids from low income, they, their fantasy was to come here to the World Series, not to come to the World Series only, to win the World Series. Right now, you see, this is what they, they I mean, this is Disney, right, with the dreams come through. Oh, they are really making the dream right now, you know, I'm so excited about it. Well, Coach, go celebrate with your team. Congratulations on being World Series champions, and we'll see you in Memphis. Thank you, definitely. definitely. Memphis, look for us, right? <laughs> see you guys. Huh? Back to you guys. All right. AutoZone USSA National Youth Championships just 16 days away, and Panama certainly showcasing that they very well may be one of the favorites. Four to two the final, and Panama is the 12 youth champion. We'll have the awards ceremony and the 14U championship coming up at the top of the hour. Excuse me, people on the field, you cannot be on the dugouts, on top of the dugouts. Please remove yourself from the top of the dugouts. Please, parents, make sure your children do not run on top of the dugouts. Thank you.
First off, I want to uh, congratulate both teams. You know, the Elite World Series is, is a little bit unlike, uh, is a lot of it, unlike the normal tournaments that, that we always play you know, just week in, week in and week out. You know, just the, the format of it and the amount of games that it takes to play. And then, of course, you got to deal with the Central Florida heat, the humidity, the weather. And amazingly, we only had one rain delay the entire week and three lightning delays, which that in itself is a record. But I, I, I want to say that I, I had the privilege of just watching what I consider to be, and I'm the one person that can make this comment because I'm the one person that's been at every single Elite World Series since it started 11 years ago. That is the finest display of 11 and under championship baseball that I've ever seen. I mean, excuse me, 12 and under, I apologize. Just absolutely unbelievable. Team Select, you guys are a class act, great athletes, you play the game the right way, okay? You got nothing to be upset about. You know, hold your chins up proud, and I'm gonna tell you why. You know what, you didn't win the championship game. That's okay, because there's always gonna be another game. But more importantly, remember this, is that 38 teams that were here this week didn't even make it to this game. Okay? So you're in a pretty exclusive crowd just by playing down here in this game. So remember that if you're feeling a little blue or feeling a little down, okay, that you're in a very, very elite group that you could be standing here right now. You should be very proud of your accomplishments this week. <laughs> Team Panama, incredible comeback. Incredible comeback. Um, you guys, going into this game, you guys had scored 62 runs this week. And Bernie and I were wondering if you were ever going to score this game. We really were. And when it mattered, which is before it was over, when it mattered, you guys answered the call. And that's something to be very proud of. Excellent accomplishment, guys. We're going to start with our runner-up. Local team from right here in Central Florida. Team Select. Chris 
Diana Torres. Once again, Mr. Matt, Mr. Sean, thank you for having us here. I think we did you proud. You put us safe. And we're honored to play here. Sean, you and the club are welcome here anytime. Anytime at all.
Round of applause, una bulla al MVP de todo el torneo, el hombre de Panamá, lo Incan Kid, who made his dream come true, el niño que vino de Panamá, luchó duro para hacer su fantasía. Vamos a dar el aplauso al hombre que puso a Panamá a ganar, Kevin Arroyo. Thank you. 